Hi, welcome to Enchiridion. Following the description of the Stinklock's anemone, we will now take a look at Cnidarians. Cnidarians, a group of over 11,000 species of aquatic animals found both in freshwater and marine environments, are characterized by nidocytes, specialized cells that they use mainly for capturing prey. Their bodies consist of mesoglea, a non-living jelly-like substance, sandwiched between two layers of epithelium, a type of animal tissue, that are mostly one cell thick. They mostly have two basic body forms, swimming medusae and sessile, or without the capacity for self-locomotion, polyps, both of which are radially symmetrical, with mouths surrounded by tentacles that bear nidocytes. Both forms have a single orifice or opening and body cavity that are used for digestion or the breakdown of food molecules to be absorbed and respiration, movement of oxygen from the outside environment to the cells within tissues, and the transport of carbon dioxide in the opposite direction. With this introduction on cnidarians, I'd like to point out that unlike other cnidarians, anemones entirely lack the free swimming medusa or jellyfish stage of the life cycle. Rather, the polyp produces eggs and sperm, and the fertilized egg develops into planula and develops directly into another polyp. This occurs during the mating season from June through August, where sperm is released and received by the oba via water flow. Inside of the female oba, the zooxanthellae algae are carried into the next generation. The snake locks anemone is oviparous, meaning the eggs are laid outside the mother's body. This sexual process for reproduction is more rare than the asexual longitudinal fission process, where there is a literal splitting of the sea anemone. The whole fission process occurs relatively quickly, taking from 5 minutes to 2 hours. Several species of small animals regularly live in a symbiotic or commensal in which one species gains benefits while those of the other species neither benefit nor are harmed, symbiosis, with the snake locks anemone, gaining protection from predators by residing among the venomous tentacles. These include the incognito goby or anemone goby, the shrimp Perclymenes aegilios, and the leeches spider crab. In the wild, snake locks anemones rarely retract their tentacles Due to the algae's need for sunlight, the tentacles are sticky to the human hand, but can produce a powerful sting and rash on thinner human skin. They are mainly sessile or fixed in a place, immobile, but will move to escape from predators or to find better food locations. The predators consist of octopi, crabs, and fish. It has been found that the snake locks anemone has an alloy immune memory. And what does this mean? that when it is presented with a known stimulus, it has a specific remembered response and it can remember stimuli for up to 5 days. This species is regularly and widely consumed in southwestern Spain. In the Gulf of Cadiz region is little sea nettles or ortiguillas de mar, or also simply known as ortiguillas. The whole animal is marinated in vinegar, coated in tempura-like batter, and deep fried in olive oil. They are similar in appearance and texture to croquettes, but have a strong seafood taste. This anemone is also consumed in Sardinia, an Italian region, where it is deep fried in olive oil and known as orziatas. It is becoming a relatively popular aquarium pet, especially in Europe, and readily adapts to aquaria. When rock pulling, be careful to leave everything as you found it, replace any rocks you turn over put back any crabs or fish, and ensure not to scrape anything off its home. And with that, thank you for watching this shorter episode of The Aquarium. This is Enchiridion, see you next time.